Hi, welcome back to Besame. My name is Shrenet Smith and to keep with the tradition of Black History or African Heritage Month, today I will be reading you the story called The Love of Freedom by Carl Philpotts. <laughs> The Love of Freedom Kebedi was a very brave and obedient boy who lived in a country called Ozan. The people of Ozan noticed this outstanding boy and named him to be their next chief when he was only 14 years of age. It was the custom of the people of Ozan to name the person who would be their next ruler or chief. This person was usually named when he was young, but Kebedi was the youngest boy ever to become chief of Ozan. Until the day a boy became chief, he would be trained in the customs of his people and taught how to govern his country. It was the job of the older men to teach him these things. One important thing that a young boy like Kebedi had to learn was to love and protect the freedom of his people. The people of Ozan had once been the slaves of another people. For years they fought for their freedom and hundreds of them were killed while trying to escape from slavery. Now that they were free, they valued their freedom more highly than any other thing they had. As part of his training to become the chief of Ozan, Kebedi had to go into the forest every 40 days and bring back a wild animal alive. He could carry only a net and a spear with him. Whenever Kebedi brought home his catch, the people of his village would meet him and there would be much dancing and singing. The young girls and boys would sing songs while the older men would beat drums. The warriors would dance with their spears in their hands and wear headdresses made of lion's mane. The wild animal that Kebedi had caught was locked in a cage. All the dancing and singing took place around it. The songs were those that the people of Ozan used to sing when they were in slavery. They were songs which told of the sorrow and pain that they had to go through. The dances were done to tell the story. The wild animal in the cage, unhappy and longing for its freedom, was playing the part of the Ozanian people, who once longed to be free. All through the festival, Kebedi would sit facing the chief. After the singing and the dancing, Kebedi would take up the cage with the wild animal, then he would march with the warriors and the older men to the same place where he had caught it. There, Kebede would set the wild animal free after saying these words. Go back to your home. You too, like all mankind, you too, like the people of Ozan, have the right to be free. Then there would be great rejoicing with singing, drumming, and dancing. These songs were the ones their fathers used to sing when they went back to their own land as free men. After this, Kebede would make a promise to his people. When I become chief of Ozan, I will work with all my strength to protect my country and be obedient to the teachings of my elders. This was just one of the many things Kebede had to go through as part of his training to become leader of his people. Although he had to go into the forest every 40 days, he was told by the elders to be careful. He was told not to go near the seashore. From the beginning of the year, over 40 boys who had gone near the beach were missing. No one was quite sure where they were, but it was believed that some cruel men from a nearby island called Luba had captured them and taken them away. The island was just six kilometers from Ozan. One day, Kebedi went into the forest to catch a wild animal for the festival. He walked around for a long time, but he could not find anything. Then suddenly, he saw a wild goat eating some bush. He began running towards the goat, but it heard him coming and ran into the forest. Kebedi did not give up, but kept running after it. The goat went deeper into the forest as Kebedi got closer and closer to it. Kebedi was so taken up with catching the animal that he forgot how close he was to the seashore. When he was near enough to the goat, he dived quickly and held on to one of its back legs. Over and over they rolled as Kebedi held on to it and it tried to get away. In a little while, the goat was in Kebedi's net and on his back. 
as Kebedi was about to run off with his catch, he looked up and saw three rough-looking men coming towards him. One of them had a gun and the others had spears. It was just then that Kebedi realized how deep into the forest he had gone. I must be near the seashore, Kebedi said to himself. I have not been careful. One of the men ran and held on to Kebedi while Kebedi reached for his spear to fight. But before he could throw his spear, another man in the group held on to it. Kebedi was soon overpowered by the three men who tied his hands behind him. Let me go! Let me go, you wicked men! shouted Kebedi as he tried to pull himself free. Keep quiet, you wild animal, said one of the men in an angry voice as he pointed his gun at Kebedi's face. If you don't keep quiet or if you try to get away, we will kill you. Kebedi saw the cruel look on his face and thought that it was a wise thing for him to keep quiet. These men are cruel, Kebedi said to himself. They are angry and will kill me if I try to get away. I must go with them quietly and wait for a chance to escape. Two of the men held Kebedi and carried him quickly to the beach, which was not far away. On the beach, there was another man waiting in a boat. These men are taking me to Luba where they have carried many of our boys, Kebedi thought. Get in the boat, said the man with the gun. You are going to a nice place. Kebedi did as he was told and tried hard not to show any sign of fear. The young boys of Azan were taught by the older men that they should never show fear. To be afraid was to be weak, they were told. Kebedi was frightened, but he tried to hide it. As the men paddled the boat out into the deep sea, Kebedi looked back on the land of his people. Tears filled his eyes, but he kept hearing the voice of the wise elders as if they were present with him. Their voices kept saying these words. Our people never gave up hope of being free and returning to the land of their fathers. We are a brave and strong people. We, the people of Ozan, never give up hope. You are keeping quiet like a smart boy now, said one of the men to Kebedi. Kebedi did not say anything but kept thinking about the things he had been taught by the old wise men of his country. The ride to Luba was a rough one for Kebedi. Water kept splashing into the boat and into his face. His hands were tied behind him, so he could not use them to cover his face. His clothes were wet and he felt cold. After traveling for a while, the boat reached Luba. Luba was a very small island. Kebedi did not know it, but the people who lived there were either prisoners who had escaped or other wanted men who had done bad things. There was gold on this island and these men used little boys to work in the mines. They used them to load metal carriages with small pieces of gold. These carriages had wheels like those on a train and they ran on train lines. These lines ran from the great house where the gold was stored to the beach where it was loaded onto ships. After landing, Kebedi was marched from the beach to a big building not too far away. A fat man with one eye and a bottle of rum in his hand stood at the door. Oh, what do we have here? said the fat man, laughing as he looked at Kebedi. A strong boy from Ozan, said the man with the gun. Now put away that rum and lock him up with the others. The fat man who was a guard put down the bottle and opened the big metal door. Kebedi's hands were untied and he was pushed into the room. The room was filled with little boys from Ozan who were lying all over the floor. Kebedi! Kebedi! shouted one of the boys as he ran towards Kebedi and hugged him. Dagon! replied Kebedi. I never thought I would see you again. Soon all the boys were around Kebedi and hugging him. Some began crying and asking Kebedi to help them. Kebedi stood for a while looking at them. They all looked very tired and sorrow and fear showed on their faces. Their clothes were torn and dirty. Tears came to Kebedi's eyes as he looked at them and remembered how these boys were once happy and living in peace in their homeland. Now they could no longer see their families or friends. Neither could they go to school nor practice their customs. The only time they stopped working was when they got something to eat. 
At lunchtime, they were given porridge and dry bread, while the big men ate fish with bread and butter. After eating, the boys went back to the mines. When it began to get dark, the boys were called together again and told to make a line. Then they had to march down the hill to the building where they slept. The six men on horseback followed them and watched them closely. Before they entered the building, they had to call out their numbers so that the fat man could hear them. After this, he opened the door and let them go inside. Most of them were so tired that they went right to bed. Only Kebedi and some of the stronger boys sat up late into the night. They spoke about ways of escaping, but they could not think of a plan that was sure and safe. They all knew that they had to be careful. If they were caught, they would be in a lot of trouble. Days passed by and Kebedi was beginning to feel the pains of slavery, but he still did not give up hope. At night, he was the last boy to fall asleep, as he was always thinking of a way to escape from Luba. The boys cried as they told Kebedi of the terrible days they had spent at Luba, carrying heavy loads from the mines to either the carriages or to the great house. They all tried to speak at once, and the loud noise made Kebedi's head hurt him. Okay, shouted Kebedi, you must take hold of yourselves. Everyone was quiet and Kebedi continued speaking. I know that you are longing to be free and to be with your people in your own country, but crying will not make you free. We must be brave and strong as our people have taught us. We must not give up the hope of getting away. We must pray hard and ask God to show us a way to escape. All the boys felt a little better when they heard what Kebedi had to say. His words gave them hope and made them happy. They all said their prayers and went to sleep. They slept on pieces of old cloth which were on the floor. Time to get up, time to get up, shouted the guard as he knocked on the big door early in the morning. The boys got up quickly and stood in a line in front of the door. Kebedi watched them to know what he was supposed to do. He joined the end of the line. Everyone was quiet, then the big door opened. Okay, out you go, said the guard. The line started moving, and in a short while, everyone was outside. The sun had not yet come up over the hills, and the morning was still cold. There were not many trees on the island, as it was very rocky. The boys stood in a line outside. Each boy had to call a number. The first one in the line had to call the number one, the next two, the other three, and so on. Kebedi was number 51. The big fat man with one eye wrote down the number 51 in a book. Okay, off you go, he shouted as he closed the book. They were marched up a rocky hill by six men riding on donkeys. All these men carried guns and had mean looks on their faces. It was a long walk up to the top of the hill, and everyone was tired when they reached there. The boys were put into groups of five and sent into the mines with buckets to pick up pieces of gold. Then they would carry these heavy buckets of gold to either the carriages on the rails or to the great house where it was stored. Sometimes the buckets were so heavy that four boys had to carry one. If they dropped the bucket or some gold fell out of it, they would get a terrible beating from the big men. The people of Ozan were very worried about Kebedi. Many days had passed, and they had neither seen nor heard of the young boy who was one day to become their chief. The young warriors looked in the forest for him, but they found only his net and spear. They knew that something was wrong, but they had a strong feeling that he was not dead. Many other children were missing from home and had not been found. The chief and the elders felt that Kebedi had been caught and taken into slavery. There was great sadness and crying in Ozan. It was hard to find a boy like Kebedi. He was kind and brave and obedient to both his parents and the elders who taught him. He showed all the signs of a true leader. This is why some of the older men felt that wherever he was, one day he would come back to Ozan. They were sure of this because they had taught him the true value and love of freedom. The elders of Ozan were right. 
Kebedi and some of the other boys had finally thought of a plan to get away from Luba safely, but their first move was to practice how they would get away. The boys tried their plan one evening when they were coming back from work. Kebedi and several other boys kept quiet during the roll call. Eight other boys called their numbers for them. This meant that these eight boys called their own numbers and also the numbers of the other eight boys who kept quiet. The men did not notice that eight boys did not call their numbers because they heard all the numbers that were supposed to be called. They practiced this for several days until they were sure that if eight boys were not present, eight other boys would call their numbers for them and the men would not know. These eight boys would help the others to escape. The plan was to be carried out one evening after work by these eight boys who would hide in the mines. After the other boys had gone back to the building, they would hide between the rocks in the mines until it was dark. Then the eight boys would come together when the moon had gone down behind the sea and would set the great house where the gold was stored on fire. This would attract the attention of the big men and keep them busy. They would then get a chance to overpower the guard and set the others free. Two of the eight boys would be at the beach with one of the big boats waiting for the others. This was the boat they would escape in to Ozan. The day soon came for the boys to put their plan into practice. Kebedi spoke with the boys early in the morning before they went to work. Today is a very important day in our lives, he told them. Today is the day when we shall be free again. We will soon be in the land of freedom, the land of our fathers. All we need to do is to be brave and obedient as warriors of our country are. We must work hard today and let the bad men be pleased with us. Then when we get our chance, we will surprise them. Soon after Kebedi had finished speaking, the boys were marched to the mines as usual. After lunch, Kebedi and the other seven boys began hiding between the rocks in the mines. The guard did not miss them. Kebedi had told the children to work a little longer that day so that when they got to the building for roll call, it would be almost night. They did just as he told them. The man at the door of the building was waiting for them when they arrived. What took you so long? shouted the guard to the other men on horseback. Can't you see that it is getting dark? Come on, hurry up and call your numbers, he continued. The boys began calling the numbers, and just as they had hoped, everything went as planned. Neither the one-eyed man nor the others noticed that eight boys were missing. Shortly after, Kebedi and the other seven crawled out of the mines and hid in some bush near the great house. We must set the great house on fire when the moon begins to go down behind the sea, Kebedi told the boys. Some of us can get some rest while some keep watch. From where they were, they could hear the big men drinking rum and making a lot of noise on the beach. Kebedi could not sleep. He just kept on watching the moon and hoping that it would go down quickly towards the sea. The hour finally came. As the moon went down behind the sea, the boys made their move. They crawled on their bellies quietly and carefully with fire sticks in their hands. The guard was fast asleep. They quickly set the great house where the gold was kept on fire. The fire moved quickly and soon the whole house was on fire. The guard was frightened when he opened his eyes and saw the great house on fire. Fire! Fire! He shouted as he ran wildly up and down the place with his hands on his head. The other men who were asleep on the beach quickly got up and ran towards the great house. As the men ran up one side of the hill, Kebedi and the other boys ran down the other side to the building where their friends were locked away. When they were near the building, they stopped running and crawled quietly towards it. The watchman there had heard the noise of the other men calling for help and was looking up towards the hill. He did not have his gun with him. Kebedi decided to attract his attention and made the guard run after him. The other boys hid between bushes and waited for Kebedi to run their way with the big fat man following him. Over here, you fat one-eyed man, shouted Kebedi, showing himself in the open so that the man could see him. 
What the? Shouted the fat man in surprise. Come back here. How did you get out? As he ran through the bush, the boys rolled a barrel in his way. The big fat man fell heavily to the ground and made a loud cry. Before he could get up, he was hit on the head a number of times with sticks and stones. He rolled over and stayed as still as if he were dead. Okay, he is knocked out, said Kebedi to the boys. Let's get the big door open quickly. They all ran to the big building and unlocked the door. Come everyone, run quickly to the beach, shouted Kebedi. They all ran as quickly as they could to the seashore. There, they pushed the big boat into the water and began jumping in. Kebedi and his seven brave friends took spears they found on the beach and made holes in the two other boats on the beach. Then they too jumped into the boat. The other boys began paddling quickly. Everything went so quickly and quietly that when the big men found out that they had been tricked, it was too late. They were angry. They jumped into their boats and started paddling to catch up with the boys. But before they had gone very far, their boats began to sink. We have been tricked again, cried one of the men. Meanwhile, the boys were well on their way to Ozan. When some were tired of paddling, another group of boys took over. They did not stop paddling until they saw the sun rising. Look, shouted one of the boys, there is our country. Hooray! Hooray! They all shouted as they hugged each other. The boys then started rowing faster toward the shore. They could not wait to touch the land where they once walked, talked, and played as free boys. Before they reached the shore of Ozan, they could see people there looking out at them. When they finally landed, everyone on the shore was very surprised and happy. They were taken to the village where many people who had heard of their escape had come to see them. There was great rejoicing in the village. The people danced, sang, and beat drums. As they rejoiced to see the children they thought they would never see again. From that day on, Kebedi sat on the right hand of the chief, and he was called upon to help in the government of Ozan. He was only 15 years of age, and although he was only 15, it was not long before he was made the chief of a free and brave people. The end. Wow, wasn't that an interesting and exciting story? I read it as a little girl and it was one of the first stories that introduced me to the idea of what slavery was. You know, it gave me a better understanding of what our ancestors may have gone through. And I was so happy that Kebedi and his friends managed to fight their way to freedom, somewhat like our African ancestors did in Jamaica as well. So it's a very good story. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you will click the thumbs up button if you did like it and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.